the left in America, exactly than uh, as in Europe, facing such critical situation that the one you have to face today is really in bad shape and in dark times. When I take one by one, which are the, according to me, the grand criteria, the big uh, topics which characterize the liberal, which are their, the core of their identity, I have to admit that in our two countries, they often deny this principle. Supposed to be internationalist, I think that the internationalism is going backward today and that we have a return of the spirit of nationalism on the left side as much as on the right side. Universality of human rights, even worse. We have a left which um, in America, like in Europe, believes less and less in this universality and which more and more believes in name of multiculturalism, in name of moral relativism, in name of political correctness, whatsoever, but who less and less believes that the same rights should be deserved by, should be applied to all sorts of population. And we have a left who is more and more inclined to say and to think that, for example, to demand the strict respect of the principle of equality between women and men is a duty in America and is an racist, racist act in, for example, an Arab country. We have a lot more and more leftists, liberals, who in name of anti-racism, and you were told that I'm the founder in Europe of a big anti-racist organization, but I have to admit that anti-racism have today, like many things of course, some sort of side effect, counter effects when led to its ultimate consequences. One of these effects being that if we demand in Pakistan or in Afghanistan or in Algeria or in Egypt the strict respect of this equality between men and women, which we find be a duty in America or in France, it suddenly becomes not a duty but an act of intolerance addressed to the peculiar landscape, to the archaic culture of the concerned country where women should be veiled, men should have the right to stone them alive if they look up at a man who is not their husband and so on and so on. This strange denaturation of the spirit of tolerance, this strange denaturation of the spirit, the great spirit, of the multiculturalism, of the necessary diversity of the world, turning to be the principle of a double standard regarding values according to the place where one is born is another of the big betrayals of the left. Another example, very strange attitude of the left who is, thanks God, so vigilant, so awakened in order to ask to any people in the world some accounts regarding the past fascism. There is an accountability on fascism which is demanded to the Germans, thanks God. There is an accountability demanded to the French, that's great. In America, where there were, there was never a victorious fascism, but a fascist temptation, America first, Lindbergh, all that. There is a right manner to say to the Americans, you should look that in the in face. 
Ku Klux Klan, you should not ignore this part of your history. You sh have to make the mourning of it. If you don't do the mourning of this fascist part of your history, you would never be alive again. That's great. But what is less great is that when the question arises, when the question of the past fascism happens to concern not, Af not America, not France, not Germany, not Italy, not Romania, but Arab countries, suddenly uneasiness, silence, not a word, you should not speak of that. It is not exactly the same. They are not really responsible. They did not mean it. It was just a sort of fake imitation of what happened in Europe. Usually it was an effect of the humiliation and the misery of this part of the world. They should not be applied the same principle of accountability. This again. This idea that you have some peoples who should be accountable and some unaccountable of this fact of the 20th century, which was the fascism, for me, is um, expressed under the flag of the tolerance. In reality, the result of that is to consider some peoples in a racist way if one really believes that um, the, the fact of having w wear, wore uh, some black shirts, some Nazi uniforms in the street of Cairo does not have any meaning and that it should have in France, it is a racist way of thinking. It is not a liberal way of thinking history, and it is the worst service we can give. It is the worst way we can treat the Democrats, the human rights activists, the women fighting for freedom in the Cairo of today, for example. So again, a left which, under the behalf of the respect of the other, under the behalf of non-reproducing at any cost, at any price, the bad attitudes of colonialism of yesterday produces a sort of neo-racism, strange and terrible dialectics. Last example I will quote today is about Darfur. I know that in San Francisco there was a great concern all the past years, movements of activists in favor of Darfur. Unfortunately, we have in America and we have in Europe other groups, very numerous too, recognizing themselves in the left and who believe that Darfur is not such a deal. Why? According to which dialectic? I think that there is in the liberal camp of today, a machinery, um, an ideological motor or engine which makes us blind and deaf to some of the miseries of the world like Darfur and who make the left being blind and deaf to the duty which should be her duty and which is the duty of support of victims, whatever they are. What is this machinery? What is it that in the liberal camp, in the left, make some deaf and blind to some bloodbathers, to some genocides, to some suffering? Answer, anti-Americanism, anti-so-called imperialism anti-imperialism, which was a great thing when the problem was to dismantle some of the biggest empires known in the modern history, the French one, the English one, the Soviet one, which was an empire. Today, applied to the history of now, 
in the best case, does not mean any longer anything. To say America is an empire does not mean anything. It, is, it just means that you don't give yourself the real tools to criticize America when America does bad and when America commits faults and mistakes, which it does, especially under certain administrations. But to put that under the flag, the black flag of anti-imperialism is just crazy. America is not an empire. An empire um, does not uh, try desperately to, to build a national army, to go out of the place as quick as possible, and so on. This is not an empire. But number two, this thematic, this topic, this way of thinking through the concepts of empire and anti-empire, this great narrative which is supposed to oppose two big camps, the camp of the empire on one side, the camp of the anti-empire on the other side, America, England, and Israel on one side, Ahmadinejad, Hugo Chavez, and Castro on the other side. The fact of building between the two the narrative of a gigantic opposition a military version of the Carpaccio painting, Saint George and the Dragoon. Saint George being Ahmadinejad and Chavez, Dragoon being America and Israel. This way of framing the world has just the terrible effect to put out of the frame a lot of conflicts. The majority of the suffering of today who have just one problem, they are out of frame. They have nothing to do with this great narrative. What does it happen to you in the narrative of the left of today if you are, for example, a, Rwanda, a, a Tutsi of Rwanda, killed by hundreds of thousands because you have in front of you some crazy guys believing in Hutu power? What happens to you? You are not on the American side, you are not on the, empire, on the anti empire, you are nowhere, you don't exist, nobody takes care. What does it happen to you when you, are, when you deal with leftists and liberals who say that it is a task of these days to support the humiliated, offended, oppressed Muslim populations? Great principle, I sign, I agree. But what, what happens to you when you belong to a Muslim population which is the Muslim population of Chechnya or the Muslim population 15 years ago of Bosnia-Herzegovina? What happens to you? In other words, if you are not Palestinian, if you are Palestinian, you have in front of you the devilish horrible, full of evil America, you are a hero. Even if you, when you count your deads, you count a few thousand, which is huge, of course. You are the salt of the earth. But when you count your death in hundreds of thousands, like in Chechnya, and that you have not in front of you America, but Putin, the new mafioso regime of Russia, out of frame. No demonstrations, no flags in the streets, no screaming in front of White House, and so on. So a machinery, which is the anti-American machinery, the anti-imperialist machinery, which belongs to the patrimonial, uh, to, to the left of today, exactly as the Marxism belonged to her yesterday, and which has the effect to make it blind and to make her, the left, deny what should be her mission, which is to support the victims, to help them as much as she can and wherever they are.